Hello, Bob. A chroeso mawr i chi gyd yma i'n gwasanaeth yn Capel Kimmel Bay. Hello, welcome to Sunday service here at KBC. Good to see you. Whether you're watching this at church or at home, our prayer is that you are blessed. So we're approaching the season of harvest. And with that in mind, Joe is going to do a spot later on with a special kind of harvest. But I won't steal her thunder. Uh, I'll leave her to tell you what she has planned. So Jennifer and family are going to lead us in some prayers. Beverly's going to do the reading and Joseph is going to bring our message today uh, on the life of Elisha, continuing our series looking at miracles. We have some sad news as well. I'm sorry to say that Chris Brayford, some of you know, has gone to be with the Lord recently um, and his funeral will be on Friday, the 2nd of October at 9.30. But if you do want to come, please do email me so that I can manage the numbers. And please pray for the family and for the friends that they might know God's comfort at this sad time. Now, Beth Ann's going to read a psalm. Okay. Psalm with Dig Padwar. I'm going to read it in Welsh to start off with. Um, Hiraith am di theu. Um, a longing for God's house. My lleirwy ti'n byw mor hyfryd o arglwydd holl bwerus. Dwi'n hiraithi, ydw, Dwi'n ysu am gael mynd i demel yr arglwydd. Mae'r cyfan ohono i yn gweiddi'n llawen ar y diw byw. Mae hyd yn oed aderyn y to wedi gwneud y gartre yno. Mae'r wenol wedi gwneud nyth i fi ei hun, i fagu ei chywion wrth ymyl dy allor di. O arglwydd holl bwerus, fymrenin am diw, y fath fendyll sydd i rhai sy'n aros yn dy dy dy. A rhai sy'n dy addoli di drwy'r adeg. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. A place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Thank you, Bethan. Let's turn now to worship and focus our hearts on God. Right.
fun to have a bit of a game. Let's have a little bit of fun this morning. I'm going to show you some items and you need to see if you can work out what they've all got in common. Are you ready? So we have a packet of spaghetti. I have a tin of corn, lovely corn on the cob. We also have a tin of sardines, sardines in tomato sauce. Any ideas yet? Are they starting to make sense what the connection is? No? Let's carry on then. We also have a beautiful sunflower, my favourite flowers. What else do we have? Oh, I have a flag. I have a flag. Now this is the Moldovan flag. Do we have any ideas yet? No? One more. We also have another flag. This is the Welsh flag, of course. Has anybody made the connection? Well, the connection is this year for harvest we're going to be supporting food bank in wales oh drop my flag food bank in wales and also harvest for the hungry in moldova now the connection with all these items is for food bank to support food bank we want people to bring items of food and the items need to be dry packet food or tin food, they can be beans, tomatoes, they can be spaghetti, they can be rice, packets of cereals, anything that's dry food that can be kept and that is well within its date. And for Moldova, well, it would be a bit difficult to take over a packet of spaghetti or a tin of beans, but for Moldova, we would really like to support them by giving finance. I'm not sure if you're aware, but Moldova is a landlocked country between Romania and the Ukraine. And this year, as well as having to deal with the effects of a pandemic, they've also had a drought. And that has meant that the crops have not grown the way they should have done. Usually when I've been over to Moldova and I've taken teams, there have been fields and fields of sunflowers. It's such an amazingly beautiful sight, but this year they haven't grown the way they should have done. And sunflowers are one of the main crops that they have in, those, in the village over there, as well as corn. There's usually fields and fields of corn just standing tall and proud, but this year they haven't grown as well as they should have done because of the drought. So we want to support Luchan and Svetlana, who are the pastor and wife of the church in Moldova that we are linked with. We want to support Luchan and, and Svetlana by sending finance over so that they can go and buy food for the families that are struggling most of all in their village. And as well as that, we want to support the food bank here in Wales. So if you want to support Moldova, then you need to make a bank transfer. You may already have one set up through the church because regular giving. If you do, then just make an extra transfer this month, but make sure you mark it as Harvest for the Hungry and that money will go to Luchan and Svetlana so that they can support the families in Badaku in Moldova. You can also drop money off in an envelope at the church uh, there'll be somebody here definitely on food bank days on Monday, uh, Tuesday and Friday, 11 a.m. till 1 p.m. Or <clears throat> if you want to bring food to support food bank, again, the best time to drop the food off is when food bank is open. And that's on a Tuesday or a Friday, 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Let's let these families have the best time this winter. Let's support those who are most in need, both in Wales and in Moldova. And welcome to um, the Welch's family prayer. I will go first and then we'll have Caleb, Jonas and Jennifer will close for us. So Heavenly Father, um, please provide clarity for school leaders as they adapt to how schools 
are uh, run during this um, pandemic. Give them the wisdom to lead in the safest and the most productive way for both the, everyone that works at the school and also the children that are coming to our school. Help those students um, that are not able to come to school for whatever reason, be it that they're self-isolating, they've got family members shielding. Help them access uh, some level of learning and some level of the curriculum um, and help the teachers be able to provide the feedback and give them the time and the energy to be able to do that in this new blended curriculum that um, most schools are now trying to adapt to. Um, and please protect those working in schools. Um, lots of people in uh, enclosed small areas help them um, protect them in the best way possible. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, help the people who are homeless or can't get a COVID test or medicine. Uh, help the families of people in the hospital. Um, help the unemployed to somehow get a job or some money to buy proper food or something. Uh, help people that don't have COVID-19 but are still sick um, with that, that sick with something else because they might not really get attention. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Helping Father, help the car, car, mm -hmm. coronavirus to go away. Help those who need your help. Help. Help uh, those who need your uh, help the world to help the world help the world to mm. change thank you god you're the best go god make the coronavirus to get less god you're the best help the coronavirus not to get on get on you amen amen amen, amen. Heavenly Father, we lift up um, all the leaders in the governments. Lord Jesus, give them your wisdom and your power to make good decisions for their um, for the people of their nations. Be with those that are making decisions in healthcare, in schools, in jobs, in retention, and and all the things that need to be dealt with and sorted. Lord, I ask for your wisdom and your guidance to be given to these people. Um, Father God, I also lift up um, all those who don't know you yet. Use this time as an opportunity to open their eyes and soften their hearts. We're all in this strange place together, Lord, and so many things can be seen and used to bring people closer to you. So I ask that um, equip your people, Lord. Help them to share their love and their knowledge of you. Help those who are hurting and, and longing and desperately need your love and attention. Help them to seek your face, if, if, if even if it's the very first time ever in their lives. Please, Lord Jesus, let your Holy Spirit run throughout your nations, throughout your lands. And let this time be a time where families grow closer together. Where priorities are are changed, where jobs and incomes are reevaluated and maybe changed or restructured. Strengthen your people, Lord. Help us to shine brightly and help us to turn to you. Help us to seek your face among and above all things. Thank you for your care and your wisdom, your provision. Thank you that nothing has happened, Lord, that you have not known about and that you cannot change. Father, help us to trust. Help us to trust and call upon your name in all that we say and do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless. Bye bye. God bless. Bye bye.
2 Kings 2, 1 to 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets of Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel, and Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. Hi there, and uh, welcome to the Kimo Bay Church uh, service online. Uh, I'm Joseph George, and I'm going to be bringing uh, the word today. Uh, following um, the series uh, that was started by uh, by Gwen uh, two weeks ago on miracles um, yeah so we're gonna be continuing with um, oh sorry the Kevin sorry Kevin I believe started it uh, the series on miracles um, yeah so um, I'm gonna be talking about Elisha today uh, and just before I uh, before I start I'm gonna pray and uh, we're gonna look at miracles in the life of Elisha Dear God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that your word brings life. I just pray that you'd encourage us uh, through your words. Thank you that you're good of miracles. You still do miracles today. And we just pray you'd encourage us through your word to believe you uh, for the impossible and to believe you for more miracles. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be talking about uh, the life of Elisha and uh, from the reading in um, 2 Kings uh, chapter 2 and verse 1 to 12, uh, we see that uh, uh, Elisha um, was asking Elijah, uh, was following Elijah and uh, he eventually Elijah asked him what he wanted. Remember Kevin wonderfully took us through the life of Elijah who was a prophet uh, from Tishbite um i remember where well, we uh, uh looked at the life of elijah and elisha was following elijah and elijah eventually asked him uh, what he wanted and he said um i want a double portion of the spirit that's on you to be on me and of course you know elijah said if you see me taken up to heaven then that would happen and yes, that did happen uh, in the life of Elisha. A, char a chariot came from heaven, uh, split the two men uh, apart. Uh, the chariot and the angel um, took, uh, took Elijah up to heaven. And uh, Elisha made that comment, Oh my Lord, oh my God, um, the chariots of heaven 
and you know I've, I've taken the chariots and horsemen of heaven I've taken in my master up to heaven um, so uh, the double portion of the spirit that was on Elijah did end up on Elisha and if you read I really I really like to encourage you to to read the life of Elisha I mean I can't really cover everything this morning but I will try my best to bring out the ones that God has impressed upon me uh, to share with us this morning. But God did so many amazing miracles through the life of Elisha. I mean, God used him to, to use 20 loaves to feed a hundred men, for example. Um, God used him like that, that the story, in, if you read the story in 2 Kings 2, he actually, he was able to do what Elijah did. He was able to use his, his cloak to part, to part the, the river into two and he, he went across um, Elisha also uh, made uh, foods that was bit bitter because of the because of some bitter herbs that were mixed with, uh, with it he he, um, he was able to heal that the food so that the food didn't taste a bit bitter anymore Elisha also and um, there was a, a time when some people were working and they came they, they were thirsty they needed water they and they needed water for all the things they came across a bit of water and they asked him and he he got a branch and he put it in he put it in the in, um, in the spring and and healed the spring as well elisha raised the dead he raised the little boy and even after elisha had been buried in in 2 kings chapter 13 um someone a, a, a group of bandits came and raided um israel and one of one of the one of the bandits fell uh, on on Elisha's grave and he came back to life you know and and even Elisha raised someone from the dead even after he was dead and you'll see some other things he healed leprosy and God used him he saw vision of angels um, I, and God used him to do so many amazing things but I I want to concentrate on on three things I want to concentrate on three stories this morning to highlight miracles in the life of Elisha. So the first the first story I want to look at is found in 2 Kings chapter 4. Um, so I'd like you, uh, when you get time, read the whole chapter, but I'm going to try and cover the story very quickly. There was basically a woman, in, uh, a Shunammite woman, um, and um, every every time Elisha and his servant, Gehazi, Anytime they went past uh, this woman's um, um, house, she would invite them in because she knew that Elisha was a prophet. She, um, she even uh, prepared him a room where he could stay whenever he was passing by and she showed him a lot of hospitality. So Elisha um, said to this woman um, one day, um, you've been so kind to us. What, what, what can be done for you? Do you want us to speak for, to the king for you? What would you like? The woman said, I don't want anything. And then Elisha spoke to, to, to his servant and his servant said, well, she's, she's quite wealthy. She's quite well to do, but she doesn't have any child. So Elisha called the woman and said, uh, uh, I, 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 and said I, 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 I found out that you don't have children. Um, so I'm, I'm going to I'm going to make a prophetic pronouncement. The woman said, oh, please don't deceive. Don't deceive me. I wasn't really asking for that. But Elisha released a prophetic word and said to this woman, uh, according to the time of life, this time next year, you will have a child. And according to that prophecy, um, this woman conceived and she had a little boy. And the boy grew and uh, one day when the boy was probably, I don't know, he was probably between five and seven, um, you know, I, I suppose. Uh, the Bible doesn't really tell us how old this boy was, but he was probably around five to seven. Um, he'd gone out with his dad. His dad was working in the fields and this boy um, just said, my head, my head. And he, he wasn't feeling well. So the dad said, OK, go to your mum. Uh, go, sent him home, go to your mum. And the boy went home. He was uh, lying on his mother's lap. And he died. So the woman sent the woman sent a message uh, to the prophet and said, um, 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 I need you to come. I need you to come. And um, uh, Elisha uh, sent his servant first uh, to 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 uh, ahead of him uh, to see what the problem was and uh, found out the child was dead. Elisha asked um, the servant 
to 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 you know to try and bring the boy back to life nothing happened eventually when elisha got there the lady said did i not tell you uh don't deceive me you know i didn't i didn't really ask for this child but you but you you but you said i was gonna have a child i've had this child and now the child's dead so elisha took this boy up to the room lay upon him two times and brought the child back to life what an amazing miracle but you see uh, in that story we see that the gift of prophecy was working in the life of Elisha because he told the woman that she was going to she was going to have a child uh, also uh, the, it, uh, there was a word of wisdom he told her there was a miracle because the lady couldn't have a child but she ended up having a child so we see uh, a lot of the um, gifts of the spirit mentioned in 1 corinthians chapter 12 working in the life of elijah working in the life of elisha working in the life of uh, so many of the prophets in the old testament working in the life of the lord jesus working in the life of of of, of the apostle paul but uh, but we're looking at um but we're looking at um, the the life of of, of elisha this morning so you, we see this miracle happening where he brought this child back to life um, and the next story I want to say, I want to I want to mention is found in 2 Kings and chapter 5 uh, where uh, 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 Elisha um, heals a man with with leprosy and that was a key uh, there was a, a man called Naaman he was actually from Syria um, and um, he had leprosy he had a, a he had an, a Jewish um, slave girl, a servant girl, um, and she told him about the prophet in in uh, in, in in Israel, and he came over to see uh, Elisha. Elisha wouldn't come out to him initially. It, Elisha told him to go and um, dip himself seven times uh, in the Jordan. The uh, Naaman, who was a, a general uh, in the Syrian army, was was annoyed at first. But then his servants told him, "Well, if he told if if this man had told you to 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 do something great, wouldn't you have done it? Just do the the thing he asked you to." And Elisha, uh, and sorry, Naaman, the leper, uh, dipped himself in water uh, uh, seven times. And when he came out, the Bible tells us his skin was as the skin of a little baby. You know, God healed this man from uh from leprosy so we see this miracle of healing working uh in the life of elisha word of wisdom to tell him where to go um uh, to so, so that the miracle can can occur so we see words of wisdom we see working of miracles working in the life of elisha and the last story um a last example i want to use uh from uh two kings chapter seven um, there'd been a, a f there'd been a famine uh, in in Israel it, uh, um, because uh, Israel had been besieged um, uh, by by the Syrians and um, so they were hemmed in and no one could really go out and so there was a famine and um, at the beginning of two Kings um, chapter chapter seven um, Elisha released a prophetic word that um, there was going to be uh, they, they were going to be able to buy uh, buy food. The next day, they were going to be able to buy. Uh, they were going to be able to buy barley. They were going to be able to buy uh, wheat. Uh, the, the, it was going to be. They were going to be able to buy two pounds of wheat for a shekel. They were going to be able to buy four pounds of barley for a shekel. And uh, there was a, the, a guy, the king's right hand man. He he said, "Well, can this ever happen? This will never happen." He was he was he was a doubter, and he and he and he was bold enough to voice his doubt in the presence of Elisha. And Elisha said to him, "Okay, you've doubted my words, but I tell you, you will see these things with your eyes, but you will not experience it." So the next day, um, the next day, what happened was. Uh, the, there were some lepers outside um, the get, city walls, outside the gate, because lepers, as you know, weren't allowed uh, amongst the people. There were some uh, lepers, and um, the lepers thought to themselves, "We're so hungry, we can't go. Uh, we can't go in, into 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 the city because we're not allowed, and you know we can't go anywhere. So why don't we just go to the Syrians anyway? If we, we if we stay here, we're gonna die." And even if we go to the Syrians, well, we don't even know. They might decide to kill us or there might be a chance of survival. If we just sit here, we're just going to starve to death. So we might as well go and see 
if we can get some food. So they started to approach the camp of the Syrians, you know, the, the army that were beseeching, be, be, beseeching Israel, that was surrounding Israel and ready to pounce at the, at the slightest opportunity. Um, so the, the lepers began to um, approach the camp of uh, the, the, uh, the Syrians and God, in a miraculous way, made the, made the Syrians hear the sound of myriads and tons and tons, uh, lots and lots rather, lots and lots of um, horses, you know, um, uh, made it feel like there, there was a, a huge army or army uh, chariots galloping towards the Syrian camp. So the Syrians got, got scared and they said, wow, they've hired the Egyptians and, and the Hittites uh, again, against us. Let us flee. So they fled from the camp and they left food, they left clothes, they left gold, silver, they left everything in the camp and they fled. So when the lepers got to, when they got to the, to the camp, they found the camp was deserted. They found food, so they had lots of food. They helped themselves to clothes. They helped themselves to silver and gold. And then they came to the source of thought and said to themselves, what we've done is not right. This should be a day where we should spread the good news to the rest of our starving brothers within the city walls. And yet we've been selfish and we've kept this to ourselves. We, we should we should not be like that. And, you know, I'm just going to I'm just going to say this. This is like the gospel. If you like, we have the best news. We have God's good news that Jesus died for us, that Jesus died on the cross. We can't keep that news to ourselves. We should be willing to share that news with people who don't know God. But anyway, back to the story. So the lepers decided to go back. They went back. They called out to the uh, officials and to the um, army officers who were standing on the gates and said, there's food. Anyway, eventually the rest of the people, uh, uh, the rest of the army uh, uh, went over. They found food. And according to the prophecy that Elisha released at the beginning of 2 Kings chapter 7, people were able to buy and sell food. And do you know what? The prophecy that Elisha gave about the official, the king's right hand man, who doubted the words that he would see it, but he wouldn't touch, he wouldn't touch the food. He was administrating the sale of the food. There was a stampede and he was trampled to death because he doubted the word of the Lord. So we see in this story, there was another prophecy. There was a miracle of the, of the Syrians hearing the, the sound of chariots and horses. And there was a miraculous provision because God provided for his people uh, in the midst of famine. So we see through the life of, of Elisha, we see so many miracles. We see miracles of healing. We see workers of miracles. We see uh, words of wisdom, words of knowledge that God um, that God uh, uh, um, uh, uh, released and, and God made manifest through the life of Elisha. But um, as I begin to wrap this message up, um, my, my question to you this morning is, so do miracles happen? Or today, if you're listening to this, maybe in the afternoon or the evening, my question to you uh, is, do miracles happen today? Um, and um, God has laid this on my heart to share these stories that I'm about to share with you. And I'm not sharing these stories to glorify myself in any way. One thing that Kevin kept reiterating during his sermon that I really liked was that Elijah was a man, like it says in the Bible, Elijah was a man of like passions. In other words, in, in Elijah was just a, a flesh and blood, just like you and I. And so the stories that I'm about to share with you, I'm sharing with you to encourage you that God can use you as well if God can use me. So I'm just going to share the, uh, share some stories with you very quickly as we as we begin to bring this message to a close. Um, 2008, I was due to preach. This was when I was still in Bangor, by the way, 2008. I was due to preach. But before preaching, I, I prayed. I spent some time praying, uh, preparing for the message. And God revealed to me that when I got to the message, there was going to be someone with a hearing problem. Um, I called out the word of knowledge after I preached and uh, a lady responded to the word. Um, I prayed for her. The next week she came back to testify that um, after I prayed, her uh, ear popped open because she couldn't, she, she'd lost hearing in, 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 uh, in her ear and she was due for an operation. But God healed her 
after she was prayed for. So you can see God gave me a word of knowledge and I prayed for her. God healed her, which was a gift of healing. And it was a miracle as well because God touched this lady. Another example happened in 2017 um, that I went to preach in a church in real. Um, I won't mention, mention which church. Um, God had told me before I went that there was going to be someone with a knee problem. Um, I called out the word of knowledge after I finished preaching again. Um, and this person, um, I, 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 this person, I prayed for him. God healed him and he was due for an operation as well. Uh, but because God healed him, he didn't need the operation anymore. Praise God, you know, uh, but this other, the next story I really want to tell you um, uh, really means uh, quite a lot. As, as a lot of you might know, or if you don't know, I've got my own ministry called Fullness of Life Ministries. And part of part of my function or part of what I do with that is I go overseas to conduct overseas missions and I preach. Uh, so I went in 2018, just two years ago, to preach in Cameroon. And um, we preached um, in an area that was predominantly a Muslim area. Uh, and we prayed, we, I was praying for healing. Uh, we asked the people, wherever they were, to lay hands on, you know, whatever was wrong with them. So if they had a bad shoulder or bad back, whatever it was, they should lay hands there. And I just prayed that God would touch people wherever they were. Now, I, I prayed um, for people just generally. Um, and I didn't really find this um, story out until I got back from my from the trip. The pastor who was my host told me that there was someone in the crowd who wasn't saved. She was a Muslim. She was listening to the message when we called out, when we asked for people uh, to be to be when we asked uh, for people to lay hands on whatever was hurting. She laid hands on a womb because she'd been married for eight years. She hadn't been able to have children. She laid hands on her womb and uh, um, not so long after she got pregnant and then uh, after she got pregnant she had a baby girl and uh, she went to the church to testify. She became a Christian and she got baptized. Praise God. And that is the reason for the gifts of the Spirit. That is the reason for miracles predominantly so people can come to know God. You see that in the life of the Lord Jesus in John chapter 4 when he told the Samaritan woman, <coughs> excuse me, about her life. Uh, he revealed things about her life, John chapter 4, that she'd been in, uh, she'd had five husbands and the person she was with at the time wasn't her husband that she was living with. And Jesus revealed that to her. As a result of that, she went and she got the whole town. Because Jesus moved in the gift of the Spirit, word of knowledge. And that led to the woman's salvation. And it led to people coming to find out who Jesus was. And that's what the gifts of the Spirit are for. That's what miracles are for. So people will know that God is, is alive. So people will know that Jesus is not dead. Jesus is alive. Our resurrected Lord and King is still alive today. He's still the God of miracles. And also the other people I told you about, even though they were Christians, God also wants to do miracles in our lives. He wants to touch people because he loves us, because he cares about us. God doesn't want us to keep suffering with a with an ear with a hearing problem or with a, a knee problem whatever your problem might be god cares about you and god wants to heal you so i'm just going to pray <clears throat> and uh, as i pray i'm going to pray specifically because god has laid certain conditions in my heart to pray into this morning so dear lord we just thank you for the life of elisha we thank you for um the encouragement uh, that we can get from the words that you are God of miracles and that you still do miracles today. So, Father, I pray for the person with um, a problem uh, with a joint in their neck, the back back of the neck, the joint between that joint in the neck to the back. I pray for healing. Let your healing oil come over that and bring complete and total healing to that person, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray for someone uh, with arthritis in their knee. I just pray uh, for complete healing. I pray for arthritis in the joints. I pray for complete healing for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 
And Father, I pray for that person who's got an interview, who's got a, a, a project, a presentation they've got to make at their workplace. Lord, I pray for favor. I pray for good success. I pray your blessing uh, on, on all these people, Lord. Lord, do the miracles. Bring about the turnaround, we pray. And Father, help us to keep believing you for miracles. Help us to know that you're God of miracles, who wants to break through, who wants to save people, who wants to deliver people, and who wants to set people free. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you.
Hello Etta, hello again and I hope that you or we hope that you've enjoyed the service. Thank you to all who've contributed uh, to today's service both in front or behind the camera. Uh, remember if you want to give to the food bank or harvest for the hungry, Joe outlined how we could do that. So all you have to do is press rewind to find out if you've forgotten the instructions. Um, so Joseph shared from the life of Elisha today, didn't he? And also some personal testimony uh, about seeing God in the miraculous answers to prayer and praying for healing. But Joseph made it clear that the miraculous is not there for its own sake, just so we could be wowed by the supernatural or some miracles. But um, the spiritual gifts are there because we want to make a real difference to the lives of others. Um, so when the material gifts run out, the spiritual gifts kind of take over, so to speak. So let's ask God to, to help us as we seek to build each other up, to encourage one another and really make a difference in each other's lives. Have a wonderful week. Um, and I'm going to say the blessing now in Gymraeg. Grace in Hartloid Yesu Christ. A chariadu a chymdeithas yr ysbryd glan. Bydd gyda ni ôl o'r awr hon hyd beth. Amen. So God bless, stay safe, and we hope to see you very soon. Bye see you now. soon. Hwyl fawr.